When you are heard, you're sharing responsibility and making a difference, turning challenges into inspiration, providing support to others, and making life happen on your own terms. To have a voice is to have some measure of power. My Voice, Volume 7, Narratives of Self-Discovery, Change and Empowerment. In this latest volume of ensemble series showcases the incredible stories of 20 women from diverse backgrounds from around the world. These women embody courage, resilience, and determination. Against all odds, they have overcome challenges that life has presented and embraced success through perseverance and determination. These women have chosen to focus on the grit of life and understand that future is full of endless possibilities. They accept with love and hope their journeys with all its ups and downs, cherishing every moment while striving to leave a positive impact on the world. From conceiving hope to birth and rebirth, she was indeed an unbreakable spirit. As she heard the empowered voices and the echoes of resilience, she went from grief to gratitude, from stagnation to empowerment, navigating challenges and issues, defying doubt while shattering illusions and going beyond expectations, knowing that love will always keep us alive. In the essence of time, she questioned, is it hot or is it me? And whether to go or not to go? On the unexpected trails, simply making her own path, and finally unpacking her baggage by unveiling the power within and embracing resilience. These are their stories. My Voice, Volume 7, Narratives of Self-Discovery, Change and Empowerment, available on Amazon. These are their stories. What an amazing journey it has been for us and for everybody. And with that, I want to thank and applaud each one of our authors for having the courage and determination to share their stories so that someone somewhere can read about it and feel supported, loved, inspired, motivated, empowered, and simply comforted knowing they're not alone. My name is Neera Gupta, and together with Shikha Sharkar, we would like to welcome you all to the launch of My Voice, Volume 7, Narratives of Self-Discovery, Change and Empowerment by Global Influencers Publishing House, a publishing oh, company with the objective of connecting hearts and minds of international readers and authors through the power of words and the belief that everyone has a story and by writing it, you are creating your legacy. The event is brought to you by KitKat Events and Marketing, a company that has been in the forefront of empowering women through a series of events, forums, conferences, awards, even building an online and offline community with a focus of creating a safe space for like-minded women to come together, engage in and discuss pressing issues related to women. All of our books are available on Amazon globally. And if you want to know more about our books, our events, or to join our community, you can follow our social media pages. Details of those are being shared on the chat right now. So kindly like, follow, and subscribe. After the successful launch of various Amazon number one bestseller anthologies and solo books, we are now delighted to launch our next anthology of powerful stories, My Voice, Volume 7, with which we are now celebrating more than 250 authors and inspiring thousands of people around the world to transform their journey from ordinary to extraordinary. In fact, 
making a further impact by donating the royalties raised through the sales of the co-authored books to Singapore Children's Society in order to support the future voices of the world. We're sharing with you the website of Singapore Children's Society so you can have more details or even um, they have direct donation options. Once again, a huge congratulations to all of our amazing authors. And we're very sure that this book is going to become an Amazon number one bestseller too. Now, there's something um, none of the authors know right now because we have been holding on to this information since this morning. And I had to, had to, had to do it right now at the launch. The book is live right now on Amazon globally. It is available in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover all over the world. So congratulations, everybody. We're going to be sharing the link to the book right now for everybody and everybody who's listening to us right now, who's here to support the authors, please, please do go and buy a copy of the book right now because it is available and we will know how many of you have bought it because we get all of that information. So please do go buy a copy of the book and support support your friends, your family, your colleagues, uh, whoever you joined here for. So please do that. And yes, congratulations, everybody. And with that, I am now welcoming all the co-authors of the book and the stars of today as we hear more about their journey and their inspiration to share with the world. And for everybody, once again, if you're here to support them, please give a shout out on the chat feature, not just to the ones that you're here for. Do give a shout out to all of our authors who have bared their soul in these stories. All right. Now, first up, we have Sarah Cole, who's joining us from Singapore. She is a highly sought after leader in physical and health education and ICF coach and holds a master's degree in leadership and policy. Her unwavering dedication lies in championing well-being and empowering individuals to lead a fulfilling life, transcending both professional and personal spheres. Her mission is to instill a coaching ethos, fostering a culture of continuous learning. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Cole. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Nira and Shika. I'm so honored and excited to be alongside so many courageous and inspiring women. And thank you to everyone who came and who's supporting. And so excited, can't wait to get my copy of the book. Um, for me, this really started while I was journaling and I wrote something like the stories that hold us back, the stories that keep us safe and the stories that open up possibility. And I wondered if sharing my story the good, the bad, and the ugly might open up possibilities for others to give hope. And although my experience was a, as an individual, as an educator, it rippled into my work and it really changed my teaching. And as a coach, it gives my staff and children the opportunity to reflect as individuals and as a collective. By sharing my stories and from my learning through coaching, it supports skills and strategies to create better relationships, to communicate clearly and authentically, and enhance well-being, to change the culture by starting within. And by empowering children, young people, and adults alike, I am more hopeful about the future and its possibilities. I hope this book gives you the opportunity to open up possibilities in your own lives as well. So thank you so much for the opportunity and I can't wait to get hold of it. Thank you very much, Sarah, for that. And I loved reading your chapter as well. And especially that conversation that you have with your husband at the end. I'm, I am, I'm with you on that completely, but I totally understood that. Yes, it's so true. Um, with our narratives, how, what we think in our mind and what other person may be going through. So I think that's where a lot of the empathy and compassion lies, but it is a different way of looking at things. So if, of course, you want to read Sarah's story and know what I'm talking about, grab a copy of the book, My Voice, Volume 7. With that, we move to our next author, Natasha Latif, who is an international human rights lawyer, ESG advisor, 
and a part-time lecturer at the university in Singapore. She embarked on a human rights journey at a young age of 17, venturing alone to Afghanistan during war and conflict. And over the next two decades, Natasha has devoted her life to leading fact-finding missions into high-profile human rights crisis worldwide, even co-founding two award-winning not-for-profit organizations. Please join me in welcoming Natasha. Thank you very much, Neera and, and Shika, for pulling this amazing initiative together. Uh, I was so amazed by the quick timelines of, of, of how you were able to pull this together, um, in addition to all the wonderful things that you're already doing. Um, my name is Natasha Latif. I'm from Singapore, and I'm a human rights lawyer. I'm also the founder of an organization called SAHAR, which stands for Strategic Advocacy for Human Rights. And together, our team and our global network, our job is to resource human rights lawyers, particularly women and other represented individuals from all over the world to go into the halls of law and policy making and make a change to end gender-based violence by changing laws and policies through in innovative ways but also ways that center the solutions around survivors. When I was approached to contribute to this chapter by Neera, who, uh, who is a vivacious individual and a bubble of joy to be around with, um, um, I thought, okay, wow, this is a, going to be a great opportunity to share more about the stories of women human rights lawyers from all over the world. Um, oftentimes when we think about women human rights lawyers, um, we don't really know what their work is about. But as much as it's noble and exhilarating and rewarding, it's also very frightening, perilous, exhausting. And when we talk about resilience and the need for us to, upon every disappointment, get up, try again, work against powerful systems, battle powerful defendants in court, um, the word resilience in my world has become a dirty word because we wonder why do we have to keep being resilient. I try to paint a story to give you a glimpse into the world of women human rights lawyers set in the backdrop of the very, very beautiful Afghanistan. And here, um, in the midst of conflict and war, I also try to show that it's got dimensions of um, extreme kindness, extreme affection, extreme generosity that will will put you as a reader um, conf being confused as to how a place which is so much associated with violence is actually one with a lot of peace, with a lot of culture, and with, with a lot of kindness. And it's within this work that I became a human rights lawyer, nurtured by this environment around me. Um, there are um, uh, oftentimes when I talk about this work, people say, wow, the work of a human rights lawyer sounds like what spies would do. And indeed, um, though that is funny to me, it, it, indeed there are some resemblances. There's the inner world of your work where you have to hide, you have to do things undercover. You may not show everything that you're doing because of danger, because of the hazards of the work or because of confidentiality. And then there's this outer world where you have to be strong, you have to fight in court, you have to raise your voice, and you have to take firm positions on things that are complex and nuanced. And so with these stories, I really wanted to highlight the idiosyncrasies of that work, how we work undercover in our inner world and how we work outside. This work also carries with it a lot of disappointments. In most cases, we don't win. Most cases are bribed or um, are silenced um, or witnesses are induced uh, with, with, with a benefit. And, and, and so the question is why and how do we keep continuing? And that's the message I hope carries through um, from the story um, that will also inspire all of you thinking about the, the difficulties of life and challenges of work that you go through, that you keep pushing on, you keep pressing on and that you accept the world with the cards that you're really dealt with. Um, I uh, do hope to um, uh, uh, have more conversations about this work through my voice events. And thank you all very much for your presence and your time to be with us today. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Natasha, for that. And it was very interesting when I was reading your chapter, um, how one of the uh, co-lawyers was um, very sad that, you know, we're not going to win. And what you said to them, it is not about winning. It is about being there. It is about being present. It is about showing who we stand for and what we are. And even that is a win from you know, the places where you're fighting for. So amazing, amazing story. And thank you very much for sharing that in our book, My Voice, Volume 7. So everybody who wants to read Natasha's story, and of course, if you want to get in touch with Natasha, we have shared her details in there. And there's a lot more in the book that you could read about. And with that, we are going to move to our next author, who is Jala Sarmas, who is originally from Afghanistan. And at the age of 15, she left Kabul to pursue her secondary education and undergrad studies. She's a valuable member of Afghanistan National Women Cycling Team that serves as a beacon of courage and bravery in Afghanistan. Jala and her team were nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016 for their exceptional efforts in promoting women empowerment through sports. Please join me in welcoming Jala. Thank you so much, Nira, for that lovely introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, again, thank you, Nira and Sika, for putting this thing together. It's been incredible to be a part of this amazing experience, and I can't wait to listen to the rest of the stories. I'm also really happy to be talking about my chapter after Natasha John's chapter, because it gives you a glimpse of uh, life in the complex society of Afghanistan. And so to talk a little bit about that, I will read you a very short paragraph of the beginning of my chapter, and I will try to not exceed the time limit that I have um, talking about this uh, work. As I sit here, allowing my mind to wander back to a place etched in the tapestry of my past, I find myself standing once again on the soil of my homeland, a place that holds my whole heart a place that's called Afghanistan. With each heartbeat, I'm transported to a realm, uh, realm where the mountains cradle the sky, the wind whispers ancient tales of resilience, and courage and beauty reveals itself in breathtaking ways in every corner. One can say that there's a certain nostalgia that wraps around Afghanistan, transcending the boundaries of time and space. It is a feeling born from the harmony of nature's grandeur and, and the indomitable spirit of people. In my heart, I carry the weight of memories, a mosaic moment unfolding like delicate flower petals, revealing the multifaceted beauty of a land that has withstood the continuous tests of history. But this is not merely a recollection of geography. It is a journey into a place that is incredibly dear to my heart. Whenever I reflect about Afghanistan, um, my relationship with the country is incredibly complex. On the one hand, you have the Afghanistan that I just described, that I have Afghanistan that I have this really close relationship with. But on the other hand, it is a country, it is a place that has challenged the simplest thing that I have tried to pursue as a young person growing in Afghanistan, such as cycling. And so in my chapter, um, unlike the tales that typically surface around about how cycling is a taboo, for instance, in, in most of the country, um, in, uh, as well as, as many other things. I write about how all of these challenges have come about as a result of five decades of war. So it is not a culture that we typically talk about. It is a place that has been transformed into what we know of it as a result of those five decades of war. And so I write, this, uh, write um, about this complex relationship that I have uh, with Afghanistan. And um, I write about how I've re reflected on this journey through um, the activity of cycling as part of Afghanistan's National Women's Cycling Team. I'm very excited for everybody to read it. I will try to um, wrap, wrap it up here. Um, looking forward to the remaining of uh, the stories. And again, thank you so much for having me be a part of this incredible work. Thank you very much, Jala, for sharing your story once again with us. And previously, of course, you've written with us in the book, uh, Redefining the Rules, and now here in My Voice 7, beautiful, beautiful story, and definitely more power to you to be able to use your voice um, and uh, 
for anybody who wants to read Jala's story, it is indeed very inspiring to grab a copy of the book, which now you know is available on Amazon. Next, please welcome Dr. Damini Chavla, a passionate mother, dentist, foodie, writer, and a public speaker. Losing her father at the age of one and being raised by a single mother while moving countries multiple times caused her many challenges, yet it has shaped who she is today. And becoming a mother led to an introspective journey, igniting a passion within her to share her own experiences. Please put your hands together for Dr. Damini. Thank you, Neera. Um, I think my journey with this book, um, firstly, I, I need to say a big thank you to you, Neera, because one of the very early conversations we had about me writing in this book, I was just so filled with self-doubt and, you know, imposter syndrome and do I really belong in this book with so many other incredible women? And you said to me, you know, you have a story to tell and you write well, so just get on with it and just tell your story. So thank you for, for sort of making me do it. Um, and then when I started to think about the story that I wanted to share, you know, as you said, there were so many challenges that were worth writing about. But I think for me, the massive transformation that happened for me was in becoming a mother. And not because I love my children a lot, I do, but because... I think becoming a parent is a transformative thing. It made me stop and reassess my whole life. It really made me stop and think about who I am and what I stand for and what's important to me and really take a deep dive into what my weaknesses and fears are and what are the things that are limiting me as a person and stopping me from achieving my full potential, you know, and, um, and really, that's what this chapter is about. It's about getting in touch with who you are and where your weaknesses are and what your traumas and emotions are that you carry with you and doing the work in terms of dealing with those traumas and emotions, you know, so that you're not then parenting from a place of trauma or you're not parenting from a limiting place. And that doesn't just apply to people who are parents it doesn't just apply to mothers it applies to everyone who lives in society who interacts with other people who's trying to achieve something in life because until and unless you don't deal with your demons you're not going to unlock your full potential so I really hope that for everyone who does get a copy of the book and does read the chapter it helps them to reflect and reassess you know, their own cracks and, and sort of heal from within. Um, and yeah, and I hope you enjoy the chapter and the book. I'm sure it'll be incredible. I can't wait to read all the other stories. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much for sharing this. And I remember when we were speaking, it was just so hard for you um, to put everything in, even though you've been writing and you've been doing blogs, but to actually write a chapter um, and then, of course, with all the different stories, because we don't just go through one thing in life, we go through a lot and to then see what to write about. And of course, um, you, you know, hopefully this year, fingers crossed, you'll have your solo book coming out as well, the day I became. Um, so we're looking forward to, um, you know, your solo book as well. So this is a great way to get a taste of what it feels like to be a published author. So more power to you. And we are dying to read your manuscript so bring it on soon and that was Damini if you want to get in touch with her we have shared her contact details on there and next we have Indumati Jayaraj who is an accomplished lawyer from Singapore and UK and she's deeply dedicated to promoting financial wellness beyond her professional success Indumati's true passion lies in transforming lives and inspiring individuals to understand the significance of personalized financial plans in attaining genuine financial freedom and leading fulfilling lives. Indumati's mission is to financially empower people of all ages. Over to you, Indum. 
Thank you very much, Nira. And it's lovely to be a part of this vibrant community that has come together uh, to celebrate the launch of My Voice. Uh, I'm Indu, one of the voices in this beautiful edition. Um, I think the message I was hoping to send uh, by sharing my personal story is that sometimes at certain stages of your life, you plan to see yourself somewhere. And uh, goals are great. Um, you find, uh, you know, planning everything to the T, uh, uh, something that you might particularly enjoy. But when things um, throw you off course or something just sort of comes before you and confronts you, um, I think I've started to recalibrate and think of it not necessarily as an obstacle, but really a redirection. So I used to think happiness is a destination, but I think now uh, I think it's something that you really want weaved into everything that you do. Um, so as a lawyer, I did enjoy untangling the knots of my clients in the legal battles, but I just felt like a part of me was still untapped. My creative side was kind of stunted with the corporate culture that came with it. And when something tragic happened in my life um, very early on, um, I found myself drowning in doubt and it really gave me the downtime to appreciate the gift of life. Because I think more often than not, uh, we go uh, go through life day by day that we kind of lose sight of the big picture, that every single day that we're granted with is truly a gift. Um, so I just wanted to say that all of us can manage adversity and sometimes when we're going through something traumatic, um, it feels like our life is collapsing before us, but we really do spring back into action. And so my story is really one of hope. Um, and what I do, um, as Niwa described, is precisely out of a storm like that. So when something happened as a young couple, uh, myself and my husband, when we were navigating through it, we found ourselves shaken and uh, we were not armed with the best defenses. So uh, the passion project really is to uh, make sure that our bright mind, minds of tomorrow um, have the financial education to be able to empower themselves and to be able to insulate themselves for some of um, life's uh, greatest uncertainties. And so the why was simply to place power in these tiny hands as they move on and progress on to bigger responsibilities on their own. And to make sure that as adults, we have very positive dialogues about money with children and to make sure that uh, it doesn't come from a place of fear and uncertainty, but something that they really have control over. Uh, so with that, um, I hope to find, uh, you know, um, greater clarity as I move on in life, because sometimes we feel like we've got it all figured, uh, but I think it's a process in itself. Uh, so as a day as every day unfolds, I wish everyone, um, you know, strength and and I send lots of warmth and love to your homes through every one of our beautiful voices. And I a happy reading because I, I'm going to enjoy for sure every single chapter that unfolds in this book that um, the, the publishing house put together. So have a lovely evening, everyone. And thank you again for joining us this, uh, this evening. Thank you very much, Indu. And indeed, when you now you read Indu's story and you see the changes and everything that happens in life from being a newly wedded wife and to everything else that happens and how you literally realize that there is a gap and there is and again for you to change careers from being a lawyer to what you're doing and the family pressure especially for us um it is a lot but uh, again once again more part to you and for helping other people realize the gaps that there are there and coming from your own experience. So thank you very much for sharing that um, in the book, My Voice, Volume 7. Next up from Singapore, we have Leah Angeline Lenka, who is a seasoned technology leader with an impressive career spanning over two decades in IT management. In addition to her professional endeavors, Leah is driven by her passion for exploration which has not only taken her across borders, but also working in diverse landscapes has granted her this invaluable insight into the intricacies of cross-cultural management. Now, interestingly, Leah's 11-year-old daughter, Isabel, wrote with us last year in the book, Voices of Tomorrow, which also went on to becoming an Amazon number one bestseller book. So to everyone who's here today and everyone who's going to be watching us after this, please do go and, and buy the book and make this an Amazon number one bestseller too. And with that, let's welcome Leah. 
Thank you so much for that introduction, Nira, and thank you very much for mentioning Voices of Tomorrow book, which I highly recommend you also take time to look at and purchase on Amazon. Um, firstly, I wanted to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude to Global Influencers Publishing House for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Um, there are so amazing stories in this volume, and I'm truly fortunate to share the pages of this book by so many amazing women and amazing authors and storytellers. So thank you for that opportunity. Um, as Nira mentioned, everyone has a story to tell, and it wasn't until I was given this opportunity to actually retell my story, which made a significant impact in my life, and I didn't know it at the time until I started writing it. Um, this story is about being spontaneous. It's a story about personal growth, self-discovery, and transformative experiences. It's a story about saying it's okay to not be okay. It's a story about questioning the status quo and wanting more in life and being okay to be wanting more in life. It's a story of, of a 20 year old someone trying to find herself in the vast landscape of the US of A and just letting life take her to the next place. This story dives into challenges and revelations and many lessons I encountered, which I hope will inspire and connect many of you with your own personal stories, as well as encounter some of those deep demons that you have and learning to just let it go. I hope you enjoy my story. I thoroughly enjoyed writing it and I really enjoyed reliving the story that I thought really changed my path. Thanks, Nia. We are, but thank you very much, uh, Leah. And really reading your story, and especially the beginning part of it, I think so many people would sit there and say, I've been there, this is me, this is my story. And to be able to overcome that and take a completely different direction, it just opens people's minds up to that. Anything is possible, as long as you're willing to be open to change and open to hope and courage. So thank you very much for sharing your story. And um, for everybody who wants to read Leah's story, please grab a copy of the book, My Voice. And with that, we, all right, I think we've got quite a few number of people right now. Uh, most of our authors are here. Shikha, can we do a quick group picture? Um, if anyone um, hasn't, uh, if they don't have your video on, could you please have your video on and we'll uh, do a quick group picture. Um. Nilu, you want to, oh, too much time. That's fine. We'll just get a good picture now and then we'll take again later. Okay. Hi, Noor. Hi. Hi. We're just taking a picture. So lovely. One, two, and three. Can I take one more? Just one, two, and three thank you for that and we're having some great comments that are coming in so please keep them coming on uh, we've had uh, comments for sarah go sarah so inspiring uh way to go indu go sarah yes sarah um so brave for natasha go go natasha best of luck natasha amazing natasha um messages for jala go jala Amazing, Jala, beautiful work, put beautifully put in words. Um, you are a poet among so many things. Um, such great messages. So please keep them coming on. Beautifully said for Damini. So true. Very well articulated. Lovely Damini. Well said. Best wishes. Um, looking forward to reading your chapter in the Brava. We have lots of claps coming in for you. Um, and so many, so many amazing messages for Leah. Amazing. Um, it's an honor to hear you. We look forward to reading your chapter. Woohoo! Congratulations. Amazing. All right. Um, now, with that, we would like to welcome our next author, Monica Devik Agarwal, who has demonstrated exceptional leadership in HR across fintech, banking, and technology sectors for over 15 years. However, her passion extends beyond her professional accomplishments. Monica is dedicated to empowering women through executive coaching, leadership development, and mentoring programs. As a highly regarded keynote speaker and co-leader of a Lean In Circle, 
She is focused on women's leadership development. Please join me in welcoming Monica. Thank you, Neera. I'm truly honored to be standing before you all today as one of the co-authors of this empowering anthology. Why did I decide to contribute to this remarkable project? Simply put, I believe in the transformative power of stories. In a world inundated with narratives, it's crucial to amplify voices that inspire positive change. And this anthology is a testament of collective strength of women. And I felt so compelled to be part of this, uh, which was totally touched by Neera. My chapter dwells in the stories of women taking charge of their narratives, becoming role models for each other. It's a celebration of strength, of resilience, and shared triumphs. As a HR leader, I see so many amazing and talented women come through the corporate world and struggle with taking charge of their narrative. I have, so what I have done here in my chapter is shared some real life tools to help you take charge of your narrative. And through this, I aspire to spark conversations, break barriers, ignite a movement where women embrace their narratives, become catalysts for change, and pave the way for a more inclusive and empowered corporate culture. And working with our great publishers, Mira and Shikha has been a truly enriching experience. Their commitment to amplify voices and creating a platform for empowering narrative has been truly evident throughout this journey. They have been my pillar of support and wherever I felt I couldn't do it, they were there to drag me along and say, hey, come on, buck up, you can do this and you can deliver this. So once again, thank you everybody for being here and supporting us in this cause and I'm looking forward to read all the stories with my fellow co-authors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica. And it's very interesting. Uh, Monica and I have been connected for a really long time, but we only recently met um, at another event and we spoke about it. And I told her, well, this, you know, your journey is amazing. I think you should write. And it was amazing. She said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and then she's like, do you think I can do it? I'm like, yes, you can. And it was a great journey. It was wonderful working with you too, Monica. And if you too want to read Monica's chapter, please do grab a copy of the book, My Voice, Volume 7, which is now available on Amazon globally. With that, I'd like to welcome our next author, who is from Hong Kong. Her name is Mukta Arya. She's an accomplished HR professional with over 24 years of experience. She's currently the chief Human Resources Officer for Society General, where she has previously held several positions, including HR, um, Head of HR and Regional Head of Talent Development and Inclusion within the APAC region. Now, Mukta is also a certified ICF coach and a Global Fellow in Talent Management from Wharton University. Additionally, she has published four books. More from Mukta now. Thank you, Neera. And, and really, I'm quite inspired by everybody. And I'm going to buy the book as soon as I can get my hands on it on Amazon. Um, for me, uh, I think I don't, uh, when Neera reached out to me, uh, I was like, I really don't have a story. And like Leah, you know, mentioned that. Uh, but once I started writing, I thought that there is something which is there. What I have shared uh, in the chapter is more about what we call incident, accidental careers because I had plans, you know, when from the time I was growing up and as any Indian would know that, you know, we want to be doctors, engineers. So I wanted to be a doctor coming from, uh, you know, family where I had doctors and engineers. And then when it didn't happen, it really put me down, you know, in, in a deep hole. But however, you know, I changed my careers. Uh, I studied HR. And it was a, when I started, it was uh, in 1995, a, a budding kind of profession. You know, in our class of 60 MBA students, we only had three. And then how it became a passion, I think, uh, I don't know how it, it became a passion now. And what I really realized is that sometimes accidental career can really put you in a place where your career and passion can align. And then you can actually enjoy what you are doing every day. And, and this is something which, which really struck me that we should be open to opportunities because if we are just stuck in one line, maybe you will not find you know, the miracle that you are looking for. Quite important 
And then things like curiosity, things like there are no shortcuts. And this is what I, I learned that everything that you get in life, you have to really work hard for it. Uh, it may look very glamorous from outside when you get higher positions you know, in corporate world, but there is a lot behind it, which sometimes people don't realize. And again, there is really no substitute for hard work. And finally, it's kindness and it's uh, generosity, which is quite important. So generosity of the soul is very important for all of us in this world. So, yep, there are a few things that I have put together from my journey, uh, and I hope you like it. Uh, I'm definitely going to read uh, from cover to cover, Neera and Shikha. Uh, thanks for actually giving the opportunity. Uh, otherwise, I would have ne never done it, and I would never have come across such wonderful and inspiring women that I can see here now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mukta. And it is it is very interesting that like from wanting to be a prime minister, doctor, tennis player, part-time tennis player, to now HR. And that just goes to show that, you know, we can all have dreams and we're, it, it is allowed, we are allowed to change uh, what we want to do and um, be a different person or do something different and yet enjoy it and not have to think about, oh, I wanted to do this in life. And if it is something that you do want to do in life, go ahead and do it. There's no one stopping you. So thank you very much for your uh, sharing your story thank in the you. book, My Voice, Volume 7. And next, it brings me great pleasure to introduce Julia Asmani, also from Hong Kong, who was born with a rare physical condition called AMC. Now, despite being bullied, harassed, and discriminated against, Julie has come a long way to becoming a leading spokesperson for AMC, supporting people of all age groups. Currently, she's working as a high school, high school teacher and provides counseling services to her students. Julie has also written with us, and she co-authored the book, My Voice, Volume 3. And interestingly, at an event um, that we held in Hong Kong, her nephew came and he heard her talk about her story and writing in the book. And that inspired him to share his own journey in the book, Voices of Tomorrow. And it's amazing how he literally took a decision on that evening to say, I want to write too. So Julie, you've inspired people all over the world and of course, closer to home. And let's hear some more about Julie. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just so grateful that, you know, my nephew is following my footsteps and, you know, uh, inspiration is beginning just at home first. Um, I'm very happy today to be here and uh, to share uh, that I've written another chapter in another publication that, uh, you know, that is provided by Neera and Shika. Very thank you so much. And uh, it is now what I've written is about being a mother while dealing with um, my physical rare condition called arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. As Neera already introduced that it is so rare that it happens in one in 3000 live births. So you can imagine what are the difficulties that I go through in daily life. And this chapter is so special to me because it talks about the challenges and experiences of mothers with physical disabilities. Honestly, I never knew that I could do it. Sorry, I'm just a bit, a little emotional. Um, I didn't know that I could do it and be a mother because this is something that is very special to all of us uh, with all that physical challenges that I faced. But here I am, I, I, you know, I did it. I'm a mother of two lovely children, a boy who was uh, 13 months and my girl who's turning three on Friday. And... Uh, this chapter tells the story of that journey itself. So I wrote this chapter to show what is it like to be a mother while living with physical challenges, um, like small little things that, you know, was overlooked by many people. And I also did not know that I took for granted, like, for example, lifting up my children or changing their diapers or managing daily tasks was very difficult for me. So um, I will not give away all the details. I hope that you can grab the copy and read it. But I do want to say that I hope that by sharing my story, I can inspire and help others who are facing similar difficulties. And I want people to understand the unique experiences of mothers like me 
and to create more understanding and kindness in our communities. This chapter is also a tribute to the amazing strength, resilience, and love of mothers who face physical challenges. And I also believe that every person's story is important. And I hope that my chapter can make a difference in the life of others. And I'm so thankful for the chance to share my journey with all of you. And I hope that my chapter can bring comfort, strength, and hope to those who read it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. And it's just simply amazing what you do as an individual, what you do as a mother. Um, it's simply, simply inspiring and absolutely agree with you that there are so many things that we take for granted. Um, but when it comes to you, you know, you had to face those challenges, not even knowing whether you can conceive or not. And then once you have had to look after a baby, there is a lot. And I think by also speaking up about this, you are comforting other people who may be in your situation. But at the same time, you're also helping other people around you to understand these challenges and come from a place of empathy. And um, again, if you know people don't speak about it, it is hard for people to understand. So thank you very much for sharing these and also allowing us to know that there is hope. And if you keep it up, things will happen. So thank you very much for everybody who wants to read Julie's story. You can grab a copy of My Voice Volume 3 and grab a copy of My Voice Volume 7. Now, up next, we have Neelu Singh, who is a professional banker and a passionate explorer. Born and raised in India, she made the bold decision to relocate to Singapore in her late 20s. A strong advocate of self-care, she firmly believes that women must prioritize their own well-being before caring for others. She has an incredible journey as she navigates the dynamic world of finance while wholeheartedly embracing the uncertainties that life has to offer. Please join me in welcoming Neelu. Thank you, Neera. Lovely to meet all the authors and uh, guests this evening and super excited to be a part of this journey with, uh, with all the other amazing co-authors. Um, I must admit that uh, this is my very first attempt at writing, uh, writing something other than uh, the numerous boring policies and other documents that I've written at work. So I, I really want to sta start by thanking Global Influencers Publishing House for the encouragement and and holding I got uh, from them through the process. Neera and Shekha, thanks for pushing me. I don't think I would have done it otherwise. Um, so my story is about my solo travels across the seven continents, uh, which is something, traveling is something that I started doing very late in life, just a few years ago. Uh, I think all of us love to travel, um, <clears throat> but for me, it is the most important thing in life. It is for me the biggest and the most rewarding investment of my time and money. I often uh, get asked, not just by women, but also by men, how I do it. Uh, they ask me how much leave I get, how is it that I'm always away. Uh, and through these conversations, I've realized the apprehension, the barrier, the fear of pursuing your passion alone, and the difficulties and uncertainties that come with it. Uh, this is what I've tried to address through my chapter, how I myself overcame these barriers and discovered not just the joys of traveling alone, but also discovered parts of me that I didn't know. So I really hope you you all enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to reading your stories and, and getting in, inspired by them. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Neelu. And thank you for sharing uh, everything about your journeys. And uh, Neelu is also a personal friend. And, uh, you know, she shares a lot of her pictures. And she's every time you ask her, she's just going to some really really unique place and we're like how did you even think about a place like that like we just go to normal regular stuff and there's uh, of course she hasn't uh, explained all of the incidents that have happened in the chapter but knowing her I know that there's so many strange things that have happened to her and so many amazing things as well and truly um, if you read her chapter you will find out how enriching it can be as long as you're open to it if you're open to receiving that is what you will get. So thank you very much, Neelu, for sharing this very amazing journey that you've had and 
the, like you uh, rightly said that many people want to do it, but they don't. But hopefully with your chapter, they will be inspired to go to those uncharted waters as they say. Now, up next, we have our author who is joining us from UAE. Her name is Nurmaki. She's originally from Iraq, but raised in UK after being born in Syria and now calls Dubai her home, where she practices as a corporate lawyer handling legal matters across the Middle East. She's also a sought after speaker, sharing her vast knowledge and insights at various conferences and workshops. Additionally, Noor is a certified fitness coach. Now, interestingly, Noor's 13-year-old daughter, Lana, also wrote with us last year in the book Voices of Tomorrow, which went on to becoming an Amazon number one bestseller book. So once again, for everybody who's here to support Noor and all the other authors, please grab a copy of the book. And with that, I'd like to welcome Noor. Thank you, Nira, and uh, thank you, Shikha and Global Influencers, for giving us this opportunity. It's amazing to hear all of your experiences. I can't wait to read all of your chapters. It's comforting to know that everybody has, you know, a story to share, and that you know, maybe years ago we were deemed to see to be seen as complaining, where now now we have the opportunity to raise our voices and be heard, and uh, to know that we each have our own individual battles, and we're fighting them from different situations coming together in one book. It's, it's really inspiring. Um, what made me even go ahead with this, I, uh, you know, my, my daughter obviously is one of my inspirations. If she can do it, um, if she's brave enough to share her voice, then I should follow in that footstep as well. Um, but also my friend, Renwa, who's a co-author of a previous publication called uh, Shake and Stud, but not the third. She's, she's the one who kind of, pushed me into this and I think it's very important when you're when you're sometimes on the fence about something and when you doubt yourself that you do have that friend who has more faith in you than you have in yourself to push you to go, to do something that you wouldn't have imagined or thought about doing before so um just wanted to give appreciation to her as well I'm not sure if she's on this call um I'll, I'll just start with the opening one sentence of my chapter which sort of gives you an idea about my story it says, when asked why we can't go home, the answer is complicated, assuming we can even identify what home is. So coming from you know, my journey, my parents being exiled from Iraq, I was born in Syria, each of my siblings were born in different countries, you know, end up event eventually in the UK where I still left. It's, it's been a long and hard journey for us. Um, and it resulted in self-doubt and a loss of identity. Like for a while as a child, I didn't actually know where I come from. You know, I used to say, oh, I'm from Syria. But my parents were like, no, you're not actually Syrian. <laughs> like, oh, I'm English. No, you're not English. <laughs> so it, it does, you know, when you're a child, as a refugee, you do kind of get confused about who, who are you? Who do you represent? You know, I'm, I grew up in the West. I'm clearly not one of them. You know, then I just chose Dubai, the, the neutral place to call home. Um, the, the, the achieving against all odds means that when statistically the odds are against you. In my case, statistically, refugee children have a low chance of success in the future uh, because of limited resources, you know, not great education. So when, when people think you migrate to a new country, especially a developed one, they think it's all rainbows and, you know, luxury life when that is not the case. I mean, it, it is, it's a huge hard step getting anywhere. You know, yes, you could be safe for a while from, you know, civil political problems, but there are other dangers involved, especially when you come into a brand new country. You don't you don't have income. You don't you don't know the language. It's been a, it's been a hard journey. But my determination came from people doubting me, telling me, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, I've, I've heard it all my life. You know, even you can't move to Dubai. You know, you don't know anything that you can't raise a child on your own. I've been raising my child here alone for the past 10 years. And Alhamdulillah, she has <laughs> succeeded very well. She has the childhood that I never had. And it's, you know, willing to keep working for your children at the end is what gives you this determination. You always want to give them the life that you never had. You always want them to be better, you know, to see 
see more happiness than you had. And, you know, it's a, it's a message that I want to relay out there that doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you didn't have in the past. It's up to you to work for what you want. It's up to you to give your children the life you never had. You just have to stay focused. You have to stay consistent. You can be what you want to be. You know, at the end of me, refugee became a lawyer in Dubai. And also I, I fancied being a fitness coach. <laughs> so I'm also doing this in F45. You can do anything. You just have to persevere. You have to put your mind to it. Nobody can tell you no. Nobody can doubt you. Only you can doubt yourself. So I'm hoping this is what people will learn from my story as well as what I can learn from each, each one of you from your stories. And I'm really looking forward to getting a copy of this book. Thank you. Thank you very much, Noor, for sharing your story in the book. And um, I know when I was reading your chapter, I was like, how can so much happen to one person? How does that happen? But I love how you said and how you've written in the chapters that every challenge was an opportunity for you to learn, to grow and just tell everybody, you know what, you're wrong. I have a lot more in me and I can do this. And that is an inspiration that people need because when we face challenges, it is easy to give up and say, well, you know what, my life, this is what my life is. This is what it is. And that's it. And um, you've gone over and beyond that. And I'm sure you look back and you look back all, all the other people that, you know, lived in the uh, council, the estate and everything. And you're probably, you know, the only one who probably got out and has made something of their life. But it's a true testament to say that anything is possible if you have the courage, determination, and resilience. So thank you very much for sharing your story. And we have shared news details on the group chat. So if you do want to connect with her, please do so. And of course, grab a copy of the book to read her story. Or if you want to read her daughter, Lana, who is her inspiration, grab a copy of the book, Voices of Tomorrow. And we have shared the link for that on the group chat too. And they're just such amazing. And I, I want to take this uh, time to just read a few of the uh, messages that are coming in saying life is a learning process uh, glad you're you sharing your story and can't wait to read it um more messages for you Noor, saying your story resonates uh, in a way with mine i love your determination and your mental uh can't wait to read your story Noor. wow Noor, you've just earned a fan um and of course there are more messages for julie to say um you're amazing uh, can't wait to read your chapter. Uh, congrats. Uh, thank you. Inspiring stories. Messages for Nilu. We're looking forward to reading your stories. Uh, great stories. Can't wait to read the book. Can't wait to read the tale of your travels, Nilu. Uh, more messages for our authors. Um, and please, please just keep them coming. Um, you are brave. Um, then we've got messages from Mukta saying congratulations on your journey and awareness. Way to go, Julie. Um, oh, somebody asked how they can connect with Mukta. So we have shared her details on the group chat. So I hope that you have noted them down. Um, similar story to mine. Can't wait to read. Uh, fantastic, Mukta. Um, and uh, for Monica, well done. Looking forward to reading your chapter. Go, go, Monica. Lots and lots of claps. So thank you very much for all of these messages. Please do keep them coming in. We love messages. Everybody over here loves them. So please keep supporting them. Now, up next, we have Fatin Khalouk, who is an accomplished HR professional with over 17 years of experience across industries. She's joining us today from UAE and her dedication and innovation have been acknowledged with prestigious Best HR Director Award in the Middle East. Fatin also has shared her knowledge and insights as a panelist and speaker at industry summits and TV shows, establishing herself as a thought leader in HR. Over to you, Fatin. Thank you so much, Nira, and I'm um, so happy to be part of this uh, book, actually. Uh, what I can uh, start with, actually, I don't know from where to start, but I can see some similarity between me and Noor, because I am also a refugee. I am a Palestinian citizen, and uh, I was born in Kuwait, and I moved to Iraq, and then I landed up by being in uh, Dubai for the last 17 years. So for me, I can say it's really a, a journey that needs to be published somewhere. 
That was my thoughts always. I was telling myself, I really need to write my stories somewhere, somehow, before I reach to the age of 50, which I've done it already because uh, still I am 39. So it's, it's uh, an achievement for myself, actually. Um, for me, it's really a very nice opportunity and moment to collaborate in, in, in this book as a co-author, and I couldn't be more excited than this moment, to be honest. Uh, writing this book has been a journey of uh, passion, dedication, and it's a project that delves into resilience, uh, self-discovery, empowerment uh, from my own experience and from other experiences as well, which is around me. So for me, I'm really grateful to have had the chance to contribute uh, to the collective knowledge in this approach. Uh, one of the most rewarding aspects of this experience was sharing alongside 19 beautiful co-authors really to be part of that. So we all together brought a diverse um, uh, perspectives and expertise to the table, creating this kind of book that we are truly proud of. Uh, collaborative spirit, uh, creativity leading to a richer and more comprehensive work as well. So uh, from my side, I really would like to express my gratitude to uh, a global influencer publishing house. Without them, this book wouldn't have been possible. So their support and encouragement really have been an instrumental in bringing our vision to, to real life to be published in this beautiful book. And uh, I have really uh, have the privilege to invite everyone to grab a copy of this book and to enjoy reading our stories and our challenges in life, which we turn it to opportunities and which makes us uh, who we are at this moment. So thanks a lot to all of you ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fatin, for sharing your story. And, um, you know, really, you know, at the beginning of your chapter, when you talk about growing up and in a beautiful normal household, you know, being called Princess Diana to suddenly how everything just changes, how war and conflict completely changed your life and then going from one place to another and not knowing. And then of course, uh, without revealing much of your story, but then to also go back to a country which is still turbulent, because you wanted to finish studying. And I, for me, I read that and I thought that was the hardest decision you made. But of course, that decision then, of course, helped you in who you are today. And even during that, the different tragedies that you had to go through. So it definitely takes a lot of courage and power to move on from the strategy, uh, you know, and traumas. Um, to having a fulfilling life. So I'm sure your story will inspire a lot of people out there. And of course, also those who have been in similar situations can find comfort in knowing that they're not alone. So thank you very much for sharing your story. And now moving on to our next author, Sylvia Fernandez, a seasoned learning and development expert from Dubai. Now, she is also a certified happiness coach and believes in helping people find their purpose and goals. Sylvia's own journey has motivated her to inspire people by sharing stories that encourage happiness, courage, and purpose. Despite facing early uh, struggles, battle with cancer, and a challenging divorce, Sylvia continues to conquer obstacles finding solace in love of friends and family. Please join me in welcoming Sylvia. Hi, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Perfect. So thank you, everybody, for, uh, for these amazing stories and for this amazing opportunity for me. I'd like to thank Global, Influenci uh, Global Influencers book, uh, publishing house uh, for giving me this chance. I think the story that I've written, I was pushed by uh, a friend of mine called Soha, who's also written. Uh, so I was inspired by Soha and Anindio, who is also my mentor within uh, the place that I work right now. My book is about uh, like how, you know, very well uh, put up by Niru in my introduction, 
about my struggles, about all my challenges, about the loneliness when, you know, these, these adversities hit onto you. You suddenly find people disappear. Um, and a lot of people start grumbling and complaining about not having support. But I looked at it the other way around. I looked at small blessings that came my way of being in the right place at the right time. So my story is that journey and it love will keep us alive has always been my favorite song by the Eagles. So every chapter of mine is named or every part or paragraph is named after the loneliness that I faced at that time. But it was light at the end of the tunnel in a boss, in a friend, in an ex-husband. Uh, and in uh, a lot of people around me at that time, especially my friends who became family. I took a brave decision of leaving home, coming to Dubai. And I think I've been surrounded and blessed by people who uplift me each time I felt that there was sadness. I've studied the subject of happiness so much that I just refuse to give the key of my happiness to other people anymore. So it is uh, a chapter where you can learn how to make choices. Uh, you could inspire, be inspired by little incidences and messages that come from the Almighty at the right time. So enjoy reading. And I'm really, really very honored to be a part of such amazing women. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to buying the book. And I'm looking forward to writing many such books that can actually stir uh, the courage in others and make them more resilient. So I hope you enjoy reading my chapter. I'm more than happy to be a part of this. Thank you, Shikha, for pushing me. Thank you very much, Sylvia, for writing about your journey. And um, truly, it, it is not easy to bear it all um, in front of everybody. But you come from a place of love and empathy. And I think that is where your journey changed from where it was to where it is today. And you've gone through a lot. You've gone through a lot. So I wish you so much love and so much power and keep on sharing indeed by sharing our stories, by speaking up and using our voice. We can not only comfort ourselves, but also help other people and inspire other people. So keep on doing that. So for everybody else who wants to read Sylvia's story, please grab a copy of the book, My Voice, Volume 7. And if you want to get in touch with her, um, her details have been shared on the chat. With that, please join me in welcoming Magdalena Snowden, who hails from Eastern Europe, but navigates a Western society with a deep-rooted Middle Eastern culture. Magda's story stands as a testament to resilience and showcasing her steadfast commitment to personal and communal growth by acknowledging the power of uplifting oneself while inspiring others. Her unwavering belief in her own worth propels her from mere survival to resounding success. Over to you, Magda. Wow, thank you, Neera. Where do I start? <laughs> I want to say that I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of this uniquely diverse circle of women. I mean, the story you have just shared, wow. I am truly honored and truly inspired to be a part of this um, adventure. So please allow me to share a glimpse into a story uh, that began in a corridor of my past. So it is a narrative of resilience, uh, transformation and empowerment. Um, as a child, I navigated a very challenging environment, and I learned early on that life's adversities can either break us or become stepping stones to personal evolution. And guess what? I chose the evolution. So I chose myself uh, with the conviction that I am enough. Actually, I don't know how I was able to do it as a child who is only five or six years old. But this conviction helped me choose me, discover my own uniqueness, and not looking for validations from external sources or pressure of society or being excluded from, um, from mainstream. So why am I sharing this story now? Because I believe that each and every one of us has a moment in our lives 
when we realize that no matter how challenging are our circumstances, um, we have the power to illuminate the path for others. Of course, when I was writing this book, I also realized that I am illuminating my own path. I was growing, transforming, and even since I started to the day where I am now, it's like, whoa, I'm on a tra trajectory upwards, definitely. So thank you, Genwa. I think she's also uh, in, in uh, the audience today because this is a lady, I, actually I haven't met her in person, but she inspired me with her story to share my story. So I am here today and in the current reality and the world around us, when it often there is an emphasis of the glossy exterior, I choose to go deep inside uh, to uncover the layers of struggles, triumphs, and evolution. So for me, it's the evolution, choose yourself, you are enough, you are unique, you add value. And I really embrace this situation today. Everything happens for a reason. I am here for a reason. So thank you so much. And I'm sure that this is just the beginning and perhaps my story is gonna come up in my own book which I would love to share with all of you, keep in touch and keep connected. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And you know, it's such an interesting story because a lot of times people just don't understand what it means to be coming from different cultures. And now things have changed. Now people are more accepting to people from different cultures and the world has become global. But, you know, when we were growing up, that wasn't the case and it was just so hard to fit in and to be told what to do. Um, rather than you know being allowed to feel different things and against all odds you've gone out there you've done what you wanted to do so once again more power to you and thank you so much for sharing that and of course sharing a lot of wonderful advice that you have for people uh, from your own learnings from your own experiences so thank you very much for that and if anybody wants to get in touch with Magda her details are being shared on the group chat and that brings me to our next author, Dr. Dina Faidi, who has over 25 years of professional experience and a doctorate in education. And she excels in merging academic knowledge with practical expertise. Additionally, Dr. Dina actively engages in promoting social responsibility by engaging, mentoring, and inspiring youth and women through collaborations with social enterprises and NGOs earning her, in fact, a seat on the advisory board of Challenge to Change. Over to you, Dina. Hi, everyone. How can I speak after all those inspiring women? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nira. Thank you so much, Sheikha. I also would like to say, before I start telling about my story, is that uh, thank you, Sheikha, because she approached me and I was really wondering which angle should I take from my life? Um, and then we spoke a little bit and then uh, I took the angle that I wrote my story. So basically, I would also like to say among all the, um, the, the professional side, I'm very proud mother of a beautiful 15 years old uh, daughter. And I really pray that she will see me in she will see in me the mother I had, because although my story is about um, it's focused about my love for mountains and climbing, uh, but it's very much uh, uh, on the front. Uh, it's a it's a story of love and honor to my own mother, because she's my inspir she was my inspiration in her life, and she uh, she was also my she's still my inspiration. She lives in my heart. And it, she guided me even after her life because the story is about how I found my love for mountains and I actually climbed my first mountain in her honor, uh, fundraising for uh, the uh, cancer center in, in Jordan, uh, where she passed away. And we were able to fundraise uh, for that cancer. It was a very tough um, journey because I chose to climb the hardest mountain, one of the seven Mount Elbrus, one of the seven uh, peaks in the world. And um, so in my story, you will find a lot of uh, self-discovery, 
uh, at times of despair. Of course, I, I was in a very long and painful healing journey for uh, grieving my mother and that uh, everything happens for a reason. And I think that this was sent by God uh, for me as part of my healing, but at the same time to find a higher purpose for uh, what I'm supposed to be doing for her because in our religion, I'm sure you you probably all relate that you wanna do something good for, for your loved ones. And I wanted to do something really great for my mother because she deserves that. And I found myself in this journey uh, in, a, in an expedition, climbing one of the hardest mountains in the world and not stopping there. Because after that, I became a climber, not a mountaineer, but a climber, and I, many mountains came after that. So it's a story of self-discovery, uh, healing, uh, when you're at rock bottom, how to turn your energy into something positive, uh, uh, serving community, serving a purpose, and of course, honoring my mother and uh, and and also learning from this uh, from this journey, which was great learning, empowerment, uh, growth, uh, making decisions at times of you know like really difficult and coming out of it strong, coming out of it um, healing in a way that you feel such gratitude for such for for, for honoring your loved ones and living after them honoring their their memories so and there's a lot of love for my daughter as well there's a lot of love for and great gratitude for for god and i would like to also thank fatin and noor because i'm also originally palestinian i wasn't um lucky i wasn't a refugee but of course my my story also starts from the beginning and from my childhood and how impactful and how i was inspired by my strong parents who gave us all the love and all the empowerment uh, uh, in my life uh, so that also uh, talks about uh, I talk about it in my story so thank you for giving me this chance to have my voice especially at times like this for Palestinian voices to be heard and I look forward to read all your stories thank you so much thank you thank you very much Dina for sharing your story and I um I remember reading your story and again I don't want to give out much but the time when you were standing at the saddle with the poster, I was crying reading that too. Uh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful story it is. And um, I know I, I get, I get emotional, like, because every story, every story is just so beautiful in this book. There is so much for each one of us to learn from, to be inspired, to be motivated, and um, just know that you know, we can overcome anything, anything in the world we can overcome if we have the strength to do it. And that's exactly what all of the authors in this book have showcased. And again, we're having some great messages coming in. Lots of claps for you, Dina. Woo, Dina, can't wait to dive into the book and read the amazing stories. Wow, Coach Magda, self-belief is the biggest validation ever. Thank you for sharing. Beautiful said, Magda. Uh, Coach Magda, you rock. Um, and of course, a, a lot of messages that have been also coming for um, Genova and Soha, who have inspired so many women to share their stories by simply sharing their own stories in the book. For Sylvia, it's a superpower to find happiness even in adversities. Bravo, Sylvia. Wow, Sylvia. Um, thank you, Fatin, for sharing. Very inspiring. Incredible. Thank you for sharing your story, Noor. Can't wait to read a chapter. Well done. Um, and it's very important uh, for the Palestinian voices to come out. Well done to all the authors. A great milestone onwards and upwards. So again, amazing, amazing stories, amazing comments from everybody. Our next author, Moira Toledo, is a student at the University of Hong Kong. She moved to Hong Kong from Philippines about nine years ago with her mother seeking a better future. Mora is passionate advocate and frequent public speaker on the issues including mental health struggles faced by ethnic minorities and LGBTQ plus rights in Hong Kong. She actively participates in events organized by the Zubin Foundation, where her artistic talents have helped raise funds for these causes. Let's hear more from Moira. Hello, everyone.
everyone, my name is Moira and I am one of the co-authors of this year's seventh volume of Hashtag My Voice by Global Influencers, Narratives of Self-Discovery, Change, and Empowerment. I am so honored to be able to share my story with you all. Uh, my story is a little bit of a story that a lot of people can relate to, especially if they're an ethnic minority who lives in Hong Kong. Um, I talk a little bit about the struggles having a single mother. I also talk a little bit about my struggles um, learning about the breadth of mental health issues that are definitely rampant, especially among ethnic minority youth in Hong Kong, which is something I personally faced when I was diagnosed with ADHD later on. Besides that, I talk a lot about the importance of education and how um, and how the opportunity of education has been able to get me to university and how it's given me so many more opportunities that I could ever dream of. Um, I'm definitely on the path of dreaming even more as I am now an HKU student, uh, the University of Hong Kong, studying art history. And I love that I'm able to pursue my dreams despite my humble beginnings, if you will. Um, I think that my so-called sob stories are not just my sob stories, but they're also my success stories. And I'd like people to see that. Um, so yeah, I hope that people will get the book please get the book. Um, the book is now out on Amazon. Make sure you get it. And I hope that you will find my story entertaining. Maybe not entertaining. <laughs> I hope that you find my story relatable to some extent and maybe how you feel about the city will change. And I think that it is definitely a story that can resonate with a lot of people. And a lot of the stories that you'll see there will as well. And see you. Bye. Up next, we have Karishma Santani from Hong Kong, whose journey to be her best and bring out the best in others began with her grandma and mom, who were her beacons of light. With Karishma's blend of expertise in financial services, dedication to mental health and passion for cancer prevention, she is a force to be reckoned with. Her professional role and pro bono basis, she has worked with 3,000 students helping them achieve their goals. Karishma is also the co-author of the Amazon number one bestseller book, Shake and Stirred But Not Deterred, volume two that was released by us last year. Next up, we have Rose Hindi from UAE, who is an experienced executive coach with over 13 years of expertise in coaching leaders across industries. Rose's coaching style is candid and courageous, providing honest feedback that pushes clients outside their comfort zone. She creates a safe space for leaders to explore their true potential, values, and life and career purposes. Rose is also a public speaker and a content producer, as well as a TV host for two shows. She believes in the mind-body connection for coaching success and goal achievement. Next, we have Shirley Ingrid, an Indonesian migrant worker who actively supports and provides information to fellow workers through migrant groups. She ensures that her community is aware of employment rights, labor regulations, and updates from relevant authorities in Hong Kong. As a Pathfinders ambassador for the past three years, Shirley has undergone personal growth through various learning opportunities, collaborations, and the initiation of engagements related to significant topics. If you do want to read their stories and everybody else's, please grab a copy of the book, My Voice. And with that, I hand over to Shikha. Neera, you, you can't escape so easily. So our final author for today is Dr. Neera Gupta herself, who's been talking to you for all, for last one and a half hours, who is an entrepreneur, event organizer, Amazon number one bestseller author, TV host, MC, champion networker, woman empowerment ambassador, theater movie artist, um, international speaker, and the list goes on. She's a part of many different charities and have even received an award from the president of Singapore for her philanthropy work. Fun fact, she used to be a dentist. Neera tells us 
more about tell us more about your chapter and why you decided to write so how oh dear i had no idea you're going to put me on a spot uh okay so my chapter is called is it hot or is it me and any mid aged woman who's on the call today or who's watching us later can relate to what i have said so my chapter is about menopause which even in today's um day and age is a taboo topic and to be honest i had no intention about writing it in a book or writing in this particular volume but it so happened that in the past year um i've been talking a lot about it to people about you know what i've been going through and you know the different ways to deal and interestingly i've had so many women coming to me and saying you know neera we want to find out about it we actually don't know much and um what has also happened is the attitude of men has been changing so from you know oh my god please don't talk about these things to wanting to learn more so that they can support the women in their lives and i guess with that i have first hand witnessed the power of speaking up about sharing our truths and how it provides comfort and support and as well as a direction no matter what the topic is so i guess that's what my my um story is all about and i enjoyed writing it and i hope you enjoy reading it and as for my experience of working with global influencers i must say it has been absolutely fantastic they're an amazing bunch of people to work with so if you're thinking about writing um do get in touch with them thank you thank you neera for promoting us <laughs> and self promoting yourself <laughs> thanks neera i know i've known you for 10 years and i've seen you go through this they for completely relate to what you've uh, written in this book and and i'm sure there are many women of our age who are going through a similar situation and will get a lot of comfort and insight from reading your chapter and also people around us will understand better how to support us better during these turbulent times um so if you do want to read neera's chapter and all our authors who have uh, written in this book my voice seven uh, narratives of self discovery change and empowerment please do grab a copy from amazon uh, we have already shared the links below uh, in the chat i'm going to share that again with you so go out there and please buy the copy and make it a number one best seller um with this uh we come to an end of the program thank you so much for joining us today we hope you have enjoyed listening to us and all the authors of my voice volume 7 narratives of self discovery change and empowerment examples said by these women will serve as inspiration encouragement and proof that anything is possible when it, you take action um as we mentioned earlier that we would be coming with um another volume of my voice uh eight so we have couple of um uh spots left so if you want to be a part of it please get in touch with us uh we would be sharing our contact details in the group chat you can reach out to us over here um also on pop, uh we would like to say that uh, all the royalties from the book sales would go to singapore children society so i'm going to be sharing the um link for the singapore children society so go and you can make the direct donations to them and um, it will help the young children uh and support the future voices of the world uh i have already shared the book uh link to you please go out there and purchase the book uh the book will also be uh the book that i have spoken about where we have couple of spots left which is my voice volume volume 8 we have uh this book will be released in the month of march so if you would like to write to us uh for this book or even if you want to write a solo book do get in touch with us we can help you your dream come true so you can also watch the video of our previous event how to write publish and market your book um here is the youtube link where you can absolutely watch uh how you can write publish and market your book 
until then next time we we meet take care and stay safe goodbye